Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Alright, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Madden Money Shot, bringing another Madden 18 Mutt Tip video. Uh, I'm doing a beginner series. Uh, for you know kind of basic stuff that a lot of people that are trying to get in the mud really need to know and I think one of the first ones I got to do uh, is about the auction house you're looking at it here uh, I'll go ahead and I'll back out first and show you how to get into it if this is like I said if you're if you're not really uh, a mutt player a lot of stuff can really be overwhelming but you really only have four tabs this year I think last year you had even more so they really kind of streamlined it and simplified it a little bit um, you have your live you have that's you know um, that's not much of anything really you got your play section which is where your games your solos are and then your store now we're gonna be focusing on the store today team over here you have like your team and then some upgrades you can do uh, if you guys want to see videos on to me the most important things are probably the upgrade sets and um, the solos outside of um, outside of the store version the auction house is what I'm doing now so if you guys want to see that you want to see me continue this series hit the like button and I'll do that but for now let's go into the auction house it's auctions and trades right here and then we got my auctions, which is basically, you know, what I uh, put up for auction. My bids, which is stuff I bid on. Trade block, you don't, nobody really uses. Uh, but auction house is the important one. So let's go ahead and let's get into that. Um, if you've been in here, this is basically just buying and selling cards. Um, but there's a lot of different techniques you can use to really game the system. I mean, there's no real, um, you know, single method. Uh, but, you know, it, it's real simple. Your R2 button, which you can see. You got you know a lot of different categories which you can filter uh, what you're looking at. Uh, you got buy now price which will bring up the cheapest stuff. Um, price which will bring up you know buy now price is like you got coins that are 100 to buy now. So if I want to bid on this guy, you can either place a bid or buy now. Obviously you would buy now because it's the same price. But in a lot of different scenarios, the bid price is a lot lower than the um, than the actual buy now price. You see somebody just got Duke Johnson for 150 coins. Um, he's not really worth 2500 I don't think. He's a good player, though. But um, you have these tabs here. Newest. A lot of people that snipe use the newest tab because if somebody puts something up and they make a mistake, uh, you want to be the first one to jump on it. Like if somebody put Nick Perry here up for like a couple grand, say, you know what I'm saying? If you're in the newest category, you have the best opportunity to get him before anybody else does. So that's something that if you're really trying to snipe, newest category is good uh, in, com in combination with a couple other things. Uh, you got cap value. This is really for my uh, salary cap players out there. Um, this will bring up like the lowest cap value players. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't even say this guy's like a 10. So that's something that uh, is really only specific to a certain market. And then time remaining. A lot of times you want to you know, snipe guys. You want to outbid guys the last second. I want to see if I actually have some here. These are all closed. Um, but yeah, you want to you, you see people with like 38 bids. They're just bidding back and forth trying to get these guys cheap on the last second before they before they expire That's a pretty decent method. It's a little bit more taxing. I like methods that are simple and, and they don't have a lot of um, I don't like fighting for cards. It just it gets tedious. It gets it gets exhausting But a lot of people do that you can see there's a lot of people out here that are just dropping bids 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 and trying to you know get their get their player on, on a good deal and you can it works that way it does there's a lot of times it does but there's also a lot of times it doesn't it's frustrating like i said i don't have time for that i like doing simple stuff uh, a to z is probably something nobody uses um overall obviously you're gonna have the highest overall cards first i'm not sure if that's necessarily working right here but um, this will just give you like the highest rated people uh at the top Number of bids is pretty obvious. Whoever has the most bids, which I don't know why anybody would want to do it through that. Uh, but those are your sections on the right side, your, your uh, R2 tab. Over here, uh, you have to use that R2 tab in conjunction with things on this side. Uh, the bottom one you can't see because my head's in the way. I apologize for that. But uh, basically, uh, program is going to be like, you know, they're, they're every, every once in a while they release um, new programs, which is basically like... You know, like when Halloween comes around, they're going to have the, the most feared edition like they do every year. And uh, these are just like promos that they run um, with like new cards. So if you're trying to complete a set in the most feared or whatever, or the Gauntlet Champions, the Football Outsiders, you, you click on these and then you try to find, um, you know, the, the, the missing cards to complete your sets. A lot of times in stuff like this, it can be overpriced because they know you need them to complete a set. But... Uh, that's something that uh, you have to keep in mind. So program, I typically don't go in program. When I'm sniping, I typically don't go through program. Uh, as far as cap value, like I said, that's really specific. Once uh, team is important, 
I really find one of the best ways to do it is go team to team. Um, that's going to be if, if you just do, I'll just do this like this, and you'll see like the best deals will rise to the top. Um, but that's still not enough. I feel like the more you would think that by setting it like this, you're seeing all the cards, but you're really not. And I'll, and I'll prove that real quick. If I set the silver, you see how it changed. I, obviously, Patrick Scales here didn't change, but there was a difference. You know, see see how the, the cards change and populate differently. If you if you set you know the more things you set to the the more um, specific it'll get, and it will change what you're looking at. So you are seeing some uh, obviously all the cards change. It shouldn't because <laughs> it's it, it's but that's you have to be really specific sometimes. Oops, I backed out. Every time you come in, once you left, um, I'm glad I backed out because you can see how my settings are still there, and it'll do that. Um, if you get off for like a day, I think it resets, but either way. So, um, and then the last one that you have here is, uh, actually, I'm not sure if I go over quality. Yeah, in quality you have, um, you can also set it by, uh, I mean, you can set it by gold, silver, bronze, elite, whatever. Uh, whatever you're looking for specifically, but you can also set it by the rating, which isn't really, um, you know, there aren't 99 cards and stuff like that right now, but later on in the season there will be. Uh, and then the last one, I mean, you can, you can go by name too, which is a pretty handy feature. Um, if you just punch in like two letters, it'll bring up, you know something one letter will bring up something you don't have to spell the whole name so if you know you're looking for Luke Cookley you know the Panthers you can punch in L U you know K and it'll bring up Luke Cookley it's uh, you don't have to spell the whole name which is pretty nice so these are you know you really have to combine all these methods to really find the best deal like this uh, Patrick Scales I don't think that was the same Patrick Scales that was um, the lowest rated before I put all this stuff in it I think the lowest rated or the lowest cost one was the 600 version but now I put in all these qualifying um, you know uh, browser selections and it brings up an even cheaper one so you really have to be as specific as possible to get the best deals uh, let's go ahead and let's reset this if you re want to reset it you just hit the L3 button or the left click um, it's your it's your left thumbstick you just press it in uh, and then it resets all your um, all your stuff on the left side it doesn't reset the stuff on the right side uh, but either way, so let's go ahead and let's show you a couple of things uh, as far as finding some good deals, some techniques, uh, now that you get the basics of what, of what this is. Uh, something I do quite a bit is I like to go into Elite and Quality. Uh, this isn't working as well now as it will in the future, but I like to go Elite Quality, I like to go Buy Now Price, and then I like to go uh, Team to Team. Now this, I don't know if Suau Cravens here is a good deal, he's about to expire, but um, I could make a bid on him and get into a bidding war, but I'm not going to do that right now, it's not the point of this video. So then I want to have elites, because elites are the easiest to sell. I basically just go team to team in the buy now price section. I look for deals, I'm going to look for, you know, if I, if I scroll down, do I see a card that is out of place? It's that simple really, like here. I know for a fact that Keem Hicks doesn't typically sell for 9-2. Uh, that's actually a bit high, uh, but either way, if I if I were to, you know, I see Akeem Hicks is here. I see here's, here he is for eight. Somebody must have just put him in. So you're just basically looking for a card that is, um, you know, not a lot here right now. Here's Danny Trevathan. Now he see he's a little bit lower than everybody else. So here's somebody that I could technically buy for 16.5 and sell in the 18 range. Um, and you make you know about 2,000 coins minus 10% because that's what they charge you for uh, for selling a card But that's actually a pretty decent deal. I could make uh, easily like I said close to close to 50 probably 1500 after the after the you know 1500 coins so that's basically what I do. I would just go team to team I just hit the Bears again I'll go team to team and just basically look for cards that are out of position and then you have scenarios like this where you have uh, Tyrell Williams here um, you got two cards, two Tyrell Williams cards around 10,000 apiece. Now, if you go, if you move down a bit, you start seeing a lot more Tyrell cards in the 12,000 range. So in this scenario, I would typically actually buy both of them and, what, and do what I call resetting the market. Um, if the, a lot of people will sell a card based off of the lowest um, value card that's on the market, trying to undercut it. So basically, if I wanted to make about 4,000 coins off of these two guys, not these, these two guys, this guy and this guy, I could buy them or I could just let them expire because they're expiring in about 18 and 34 minutes. So if I, if I were to, uh, if I had Tyrell Williams cards um, in my, you know, in my binder, um, I could sell them, you know, as if those cards didn't exist. 
All right, then you got scenarios like this sometimes where you really have, you have two cards here. You have Tyra Williams, which is one of the lowest cards. You just, one just sold. You got another one here, which is also 1075. So basically, if I wanted to, I could buy both of those cards and then reset them to the lowest value of these cards down here. These Tyra Williams cards are selling for about 12 and a half. So that's a technique, I like to call it resetting the market, which is basically a lot of people will sell cards based off of the lowest card that's already out there. They'll try to undercut the lowest card. So they'll basically buy these, they'll basically you know check to see what's selling out there. They'll see Tyrell for 10 and a half, and then they'll try to undercut that 10 and a half, where you can basically eliminate that, buy them, and then sell them for the same 12 as these other guys. So if I were to buy both of these cards before this other guy got his, I could have made easily about 4,000 of coins right there. So that's another technique um, that you can use. Uh, but like I said, I'm not buying any because the 100,000 coins I have are going to somebody. They're, I'm actually selling them. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I could be sniping right now, but I'm really just giving a tutorial. So now I'll show you guys how to sell the cards. That, now that I showed you what to look for, here's another scenario. You got, uh, you know, um, Anthony Sherman here. Fullbacks sell pretty good. You may not think that they do, uh, but you can actually make a turn a pretty decent profit. I could buy Anthony Sherman here sell him for like the 12. I mean, this is, you know, you're making 2,000 coins. How long would it take you to do these solos to make 2,000 coins compared to um, just flipping cards? I just showed you three examples in about five minutes where you could easily make 2,000, uh, two grand per. I think I'll actually buy Sherman and do that. <clears throat> now, typically what I do once I buy a guy is I go right to market. All right, not right to market. I'll just flip him right from this screen. And that's just, this is how you do it right here. You just buy, you know, you can set the hour price, the starting price, the buy now price. You can try to trick people, and a lot of new people might be easy to trick. Uh, where you set the, uh, you know, you can set the starting price for the price that you want. A lot of people try this, and I think it works sometimes. But set the starting price for the price you actually want, and then set the buy now price for, um, you know something ridiculous like a lot higher so it looks like they're getting a great deal and then people will like panic when it's clicking down and they'll and they'll they'll, they'll hit you know they'll, they'll place a bid and then uh they won't realize till after that they they really got the original price there's a lot of way to trick people that aren't really new to this uh, but that's that's one technique that i might try in a little bit but for now i think i'll just set the buy now price for a reasonable game because what i really want to do is just flip this card as quick as possible the longer you hold on to a card uh the let the it essentially loses value to an extent sometimes the prices go up sometimes they go down but the longer you're holding on to it the more risk it is for you uh which is you know not what you not where you want to be so i'm going to set this guy for 12 and a half with a starting bid at 12.25 because i want to sell it hopefully i'll sell it before the end of this video but i am shooting this in the morning so there's not a lot of people on so that's how you do that so i, I, I completed the set <laughs> so um so that's that but i want to show you guys a real quick trick on how to know what the best price is and how to sell them if you don't buy them like that so typically you go to your item binder here and that's in the next tab over uh you go to um your uh, this is your team my team's looking at trash like i said I, I this isn't my main system i'm actually uh doing most of my stuff on xbox but i record mostly on playstation it's a much better setup so we're gonna go to overall just to bring up the best cards that i have which are pretty bad <laughs> i got ronald leary here so let's see um i might actually sell him i don't know if i need to sell him but either way so if i want to see what ronald leary is selling for without actually um you know going into the market i guess or going on mudhead you can go on mudhead.com and get a lot of really good uh pricing on these guys but so i just basically come into my item binder hit the l1 button or the left bumper button if you're on xbox and it'll bring up all the other cards out there then you just basically go to buy now price and it'll show you what the guy's selling for so right now if i want to sell them quick i could undercut the seven nine but i could easily just sell them in the eight range and just be patient um, i'm not actually to the point where i feel the need to sell them anyway but uh, this would be the way um, to sell them. So then, uh, once I find out what the what the market values are, I just go right back in. Up oh, wrong guy. I go right back in, hit uh, auction, and then just you know repeat the steps I just showed you. Like I said, you can you can risk it and overbid or oversell. You know what I'm saying a lot of people I've noticed like what I've, I've been doing um, some some uh, other sniping methods where people are just buying them regardless of price because i think there's a lot of new people that are making mistakes right now you can you can count on new mutt players making mistakes and um you know buying stuff that isn't really there so 
Um, so that's it. That's the video. Like I said, if you guys want to see um, tips on the solos, what's the best solos to do, maybe tips on how to beat the solos. I have a couple videos out like that. Um, how to do these upgrade sets because I know these are the really unique ones. I mean, they were some really here, but uh, and this is going to get bigger too as the year goes on. Um, the upgrade sets binder gets bigger and bigger. You're going to see when they bring out new, um, you know, programs that there's going to be even more of these. Uh, but I could also show you how to complete some of these. So, um, and those will probably be short tip videos. So if you guys want to see that, hit the like button. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Moish it out.